my conclusion was that, was I'll put it this way, if the apostles believed that when they had left this earth, what they had written down would function as the church's sole infallible rule of faith and practice, they sure as heck did not act like it. And they didn't sound like it in the things that they said. Most of them, as you know, don't appear to have written anything. John wrote a few short epistles in which he twice, I mean, not once, but twice informs his readers that if he had his druthers, his druthers, isn't that how you say it? If he well, had in his, Kentucky, it's druthers, yeah. Yeah, if he had his druthers, he wouldn't write at all. That's what John says. Here's what John says twice. Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink, but I hope to come see you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. John is not acting like someone who believes that when he dies, inspired scripture is going to function as the sole rule of faith and practice for all the for his spiritual children. And Paul doesn't act like that either, not only when he's talking to larger bodies like the church at Ephesus or Corinth, but also when he's talking directly to the people he's mentoring like Timothy and Titus. Yeah, and that's the passage that you and I focused on last week, and that is the one apostle in the New Testament who actually does address this specific issue. How is his doctrine going to be preserved once he's left this earth? And, you know, interestingly, and shockingly for me when I first noticed it, he doesn't say a word about his writings. I mean, right when we would expect St. Paul to have said to Timothy, take my letters, Timothy, make as many copies of them as you possibly can, staple them together, begin to send them out, begin to publish them. Right when we would expect him to say something like that, Paul turns around as he's preparing for his departure from this life, and he says to Timothy, or he speaks to Timothy of a pattern of sound words that Timothy has heard, several times the word heard appears, that Timothy has heard from him. And he tells Timothy to guard this pattern of sound words by the Holy Spirit that God has given him and to entrust this body of doctrine, this pattern of sound words, this teaching he's heard, to entrust it to other faithful men who he presumes will do the same, will guard it by the Holy Spirit and will pass it on to others. That's what he says, guard the truth, this is Paul writing to Timothy, guard the truth that has been entrusted to you by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, and what you have heard from me before many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. What I found in reading this and looking through this is a mindset among the apostles, John, who doesn't even want to write, uh, many of the others, you know, who didn't write at all, and Paul, who did write and wrote a lot, and yet doesn't talk about his writings at the end, but talks rather about this idea of, you know, guarding a body of doctrine and passing it on and all that. A mindset, this is what I found, a mindset among the apostles that did not reflect at all what I would have expected of men who are preparing their spiritual children for a time when Scripture is going to function as their soul-binding authority for faith and for life. 